<laughs> so the D-Day is finally here. And we are going to find out who is truly the man they say they are. Between Javante Tank Davis and Ryan the King Gashia or King Ryan Gashia. As we know, the back and forth has been going on for months now, leading up to this night. And so far, so good. You know, the body language experts, as you already know, they are out in their numbers and they are already making predictions based off or based on the body language of the two competitors. So let's get into it. Come on, sucker. I said, show me something. <laughs> leading up to this fight, there has been a lot of things that are for me the key things I should be looking at. And the first thing is the utterances made from both camps or what the two fighters have to say about each other. First and foremost, there's an acknowledgement between both of them for each other's powers in the ring. Each of them acknowledges that the other one possesses, you know, the knockout punch and the ferocious fighting style that is very dangerous. But one thing stands out for me. That is Devontae Tank Davis saying he doesn't want to get hit with one of Ryan Garcia's punches. Basically saying, I ain't trying to get hit with one of those. That tells me that he is kind of scared. Now, I know it's normal cliche. Oh, he's scared. He's this, he's that. And it's kind of unbelievable to think Tank is scared because he's sort of like a mini Mike Tyson. Can Nunez recover? Oh, big straight left. He's in big trouble. And this one is over. And again, and he's won an incredible. Oh, oh, and down. You know, he knocks all his opponents out and all that stuff. But looking at the way he has been behaving leading up to this fight, I've not seen him behave this way against any of his other opponents. You understand? That's number one. Number two, the kind of utterances he has made about Ryan Gashia kind of connotes that he's sort of afraid. Number one is the rehydration clause, which was in the contract saying after the weigh-ins, you can't rehydrate above a certain amount of weight. Okay, which is kind of weird, but okay, maybe pass right and then secondly saying i ain't trying to get hit with one of those i'm working on my defense it's like okay i mean it might also be that he's trying to flatter ryan gashia knowing fully well that he might get into his head right and ryan gashia on his own side has been trying to you know prove to the fans that he's not scared he's going to do whatever it takes even went as far as accepting to give up his entire purse if he loses which everybody knows is a kind of foolish decision because his own financial advisors had to call him back and say now nah, you can't do that. Don't do that. Don't agree to such things. You know, but I think Tank was basically trying to push him as far as he could possibly push him to see if this guy is really going to take whatever it is he offers him. That's why he went as far as saying, okay, since you're so sure, let's bet all our money on it. And Ryan basically agreed. You know, but then all these are just, you know, shenanigans, bull jibes heading up to the fight, right? Yesterday was the weigh-ins. And this is the particular event I always look forward to. Like the Easy versus Alex Pereira fight, I kind of paid attention to the wins and peeped the body language of Easy and Pereira from the first fight to the second one, noting the slight differences or the change of you know countenance they had the second time around. And I was able to pick up the fact that Easy seemed a lot more, you know, like okay, I'm here, let's do this, than the last time where he was kind of tentative and you could see the shadow of his losses kind of. You know clouding over him in the wings and the face off but in the second fights at the wings and during the face off you could see he stepped more closer to Pereira and was more willing to you know own the space rather than give Pereira room so that kind of told me you know easy was ready for the second fight Leading up to this one now, peeping the body language of both fighters, I can say that Tank Davis is kind of ruffled to an extent because none of his opponents have behaved the way Ryan Garcia is behaving so far. That is to say, all his opponents before this fight have put up this false aggressive you know, stature against him, trying to basically bully him. And he has been like, okay, in the ring, you're going to find out who I am, right? But in this fight, Ryan Garcia is basically just giving him back everything he says. You know, everything he says, Ryan has something to say back to him. And in my own personal opinion, Javante Tank Davis is pretty much the finished product. What I'm trying to say in essence is, he is as explosive as he's ever going to be. He has almost plateaued as a fighter, if you ask me. But Ryan Garcia is still on the, you know, on the incline. He's still, you know, going up 
if you ask me he's still coming you know to his maturity so to speak in boxing and even when you look at him he's looking more mature he's, he's no longer looking boyish so to speak so those are key things i also looked at and then when it was time for the face off proper i saw javante you know telling the man standing in between them to you know shift back so you could see ryan properly but then i saw ryan taking up more of the space like okay yeah i'm here you he wanted to see me so i'm here what are you going to do about it right and then they were talking to each other and then this is also another key element in this was the fact that bernard the executioner hopkins what are your people are afraid of who is a master strategist and a mastermind manipulator kind of went over to tank side and said something to him i don't know what he said i don't know if he told him to watch out maybe he might follow up the stage i don't know if he was talking or saying something to him in favor of ryan Garcia, but tank kind of reacted in an aggressive and angry way and then they started going back and forth You understand and regardless of what he said it, the fact that he's working for ryan Garcia, as far as this fight is concerned and he's also in the management of golden boy kind of tells me that whatever it is he said to tank was meant to ruffle tank a little bit and he's a boxer himself so he knows that right so i kind of think that plays into you know the grand scheme of things straight to my verdict they told me you could hit hard you're just a sissy <laughs> Come on, sucker. my verdict is Javante Tank Davis has knockout power, everybody knows, but he's a slow starter. Ryan Gashir, on the other hand, doesn't let opponents get too close to him. We've seen him get cracked a little bit. Oh, looking... Two bits, you know, when his opponent dropped him, but at least he climbed off the canvas to also get the win. Which, if you ask me, is an additional point because we've never seen Javante Tank Davis on the canvas. So we don't know what it will feel like or what he will be like when he finally runs into someone that will give him some kind of opposition, right? Which I think Ryan Garcia brings to the table. But then Tank also still possesses that explosive knockout power or that explosive power, I would say. Ryan Garcia tends to knock opponents out with one punch more than Javante Tank Davis. But Javante Tank Davis punches are more explosive. They look more like, you know, highlight reels, so to speak. I said, look at you round seven and you're tired you have eight more rounds to go so taking that into consideration and taking the fact that javante tank davis is usually a slow starter i would say that the key round in this fight is round eight and you're tired you have eight more rounds to go <laughs> given the fact that javante is most likely to pick up from round six when he has you know fully studied what ryan Garcia is doing or ryan Garcia's game plan so to speak but then, knowing the fact that Ryan Garcia starts his fights quick, right? He's quickly out of the blocks. He doesn't really give the opponent that much chance to do whatever they want with him. So, it's going to be a very dodgy affair in the early parts of the fight. Because Javante has already said, I ain't trying to get hit with one of those. So, he tells me he's being cautious. So, he will not go all out. But at the same time, he needs to make Ryan Garcia respect his power. Which I think is the very, very key factor for Javante Tank Davis if he's going to win this fight. If he fails to make Ryan Garcia respect his power early, he stands a very big chance of surprisingly getting knocked out, right? And Ryan Garcia also, if he thinks, oh, I'm beating this guy up from round one to six, for instance, and then this guy can't do anything with me. And then he lets himself get open then it might also be night night for him right but then it comes down to one very key thing maturity right like i said javante tank davis seems like he has already matured in boxing he seems like the already finished product while ryan Garcia seems like he's still on the incline he's still improving he, rather he's becoming a man so to speak in boxing so hmm my personal verdict, given the face-off, given the energy I've seen around both fighters, is that Ryan Garcia beats Tank Davis by a knockout in the 10th round or by unanimous decision. Now, that is not to say I'm ruling out Javante Tank Davis winning. 
But if Javante Tank Davis will win, like I said, it will most likely be in the eighth round after he has picked up his pieces from round six and seven, which is basically the second half of the fight. So tell me what you think in the comment section. I mean, we are all going to see the fight. So if I'm right, I'll come back here to say, yeah. If I'm wrong, I'll also come back here to say, whoa, this happened in a way I never saw coming. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again after tonight's big show. Stay tuned.